Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Harlequin Coho here, bringing you a big fat four versus four, and I'm going to let this game just get started while I give you a quick overview of all the players here. On the Axis team, uh, we basically have three Blitzkrieg commanders and one defensive commander. Uh, we've got Manu13 down here in the south. To his immediate right, we have RWZB. And above them, the next pair of players we have is going to be M. Jason. And then above him, we have Blackhand 3. M. Jason, by the way, is the defense commander. Everybody else is uh, a Blitzkrieg commander. And on the left-hand side of the map, we have uh, Second Hellhound over here on the far left, who is an airborne commander. Right above him, we have Smee Air, who is an airborne commander as well. Right above them, we have Blackhawk995, who is also an airborne commander. And then just to the north of him, we have Adizizi, 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 who is also an airborne commander. So, oh my god, could it be? We've got four X airborne commanders uh, versus three Blitzkrieg and one defense commander. This is kind of a battle of the commander abilities here. I like this. So let's take a look and see where this is going to go. Uh, FYI, I have randomized the starting positions, and there is far too much going on here. So like all 4v4s, I'm going to just try and try my best to keep up with all of the action on the map and uh, see what's going on and that sort of thing. When possible, I will give some strategic insights. So uh, seeing where all the units are going, we see a little bit of early clashing going on out here. Uh, it's worth mentioning, you know what, I will pause for a second just to talk about this map. Uh, for anyone who is not familiar with this map, we do have uh, three capture uh, points on uh, diagonally and diagonally. Uh, sorry, five capture points, but like making a giant V is what I'm trying to say here. So really, this capture point is usually the decider. Uh, everybody kind of wants, the two bottom players kind of want to fight tooth and nail over this. These two middle ones can push back and forth, and these two corner ones are sort of freebies. Uh, usually the right-hand side gets this one all game, and the left-hand side gets that one all game. And of important note is this little fortification up here. Uh, instead of having like a diamond setup or whatever, this V means that uh, we have kind of a, a uh, empty space here in the middle of the map. And I'll take a quick look. I'll unpause the game while we look at this. And you'll see that this side of the map here is just is just totally munitions rich. Just It's a big whole bunch of these uh, really medium uh, point munitions just kind of all over the place and a big building that everybody usually fights over. So a uh, huge strategic advantage to capping that. We'll take a look at that in a sec. But meanwhile, let's take a look at the center of the map that has all of the fuel. Uh, and we'll see what's going to go on here. So, uh, you know, in a nice little fuel dump kind of looking place here, you've got all these, uh, you know, central fuel points between the two. Uh, you can see right away that we have uh, SME Air taking up position in, in one of these buildings. Uh, meanwhile, all of these, uh, you know, combat pioneers, ooh, combat pioneers, three of three, doing some serious damage here. They've got, uh, you know, MP40s, and there are three of them, that sort of thing. So combat pioneers, pretty cool, pretty cool unit there. Uh, advanced defense engineers out by SME. And this is all just kind of like the kind of playing footsie early game here. <laughs> we can see that M. Jason, the, uh, the ever defense commander, uh, quick to throw up a bunker here. You know, I, I think that may be a little bit too soon, but eh, whatever. That's cool. He's defending a capture point at the very least. Um, we have an early, uh, I'm guessing this is going to be a uh, early assault jeep coming out here. This is level 4. They do cap at level 5, but at level 4 they do not. Uh, just coming out, putting some pressure. We do have the venerable Volksgrenadiers out here for RWZB, uh, backed up by a durable HMG team, backed up by another HMG team. So lots and lots of units just kind of pouring into the center here, fighting over this fuel kind of tooth and nail, that sort of thing. Uh, in the top position, you'll re you'll notice that there's a bunch of charismatic engineers running around up here. Uh, Adizizi, Adizizi has got kind of control over this area. However, uh, Blackhand uh, does have control over this building. So he's just kind of sitting in the building. And in the south, uh, we have a little bit of Second Hellhound just kind of fighting it out with Manu13. For the most part, it looks like uh, Second Hellhound has got total control over this area. So let's go back to the furious fighting in the center. Uh, we have at least four different armies here, two allies, two Axis. And uh, we'll see Manu13 is even up here. So he's in the south and kind of in the middle here uh, with RBZ doing all this firing. Uh, looks like, again, Smee Air is just stalling. Uh, he's just making, he's just buying time sitting in this building. You can see that even with all the venerable Volksgrenadiers and the combat pioneers firing away at this building, uh, he's still able just to kind of, you know, shrug off the damage for quite a while. Uh, eventually he's going to have to get out of there, though. But it looks like for the time being, they are sort of uh, losing control over the center here. Uh, RWZB has put a machine gun nest in this building right next to it. And, uh, you know, so pretty much what we're seeing here is a total loss of the center for the allies, but the allies are kind of getting the left and the right-hand sides. So 
uh, you know, that's that's a, a position that will happen on many maps, but we'll see uh, where that goes from here. So uh, let's take a look back at this top position. We can see that uh, Fatalin HMG team coming on in, trying to support these uh, pioneers who are, uh, you know, trying to secure this area against all odds. Uh, you can see right away the allies were quick to uh, start start putting up observation posts on these munition points and that sort of thing. Uh, again, that top part of the map, huge munitions heavy area, big advantage to whatever team can kind of hold on to it, but it's not actually a tactical point. So, uh, pushing out here, putting some pressure on the skilled mortar team, which already has two kills. Uh, they're going to have to get out of there unless this machine gun team can set up and put down some suppressing fire. Uh, yes, doing some pretty good damage here to the pioneers, and uh, everybody else taking cover as well. Maybe got to get lucky with some mortar shots in this building. Uh, but for the time being, uh, these guys are hanging out here, but we do have snipers moving up and all that sort of thing. So let's take a look around. I kind of showed it at the beginning here. Uh, let's see, we have a barracks, a supply yard going up here for Smee Air. Uh, his ally has a single barracks. We have uh, one weapon support center for Blackhawk and another weapon support center for Adazizi. So um, weapon support centers for everybody. However, Adazizi has got his own forward barracks up in this little tiny, tiny little tower up here. Uh, so he'll be able to pump out some units out of that spot for sure. Uh, machine gun on machine gun action now. Uh, looks like our uh, weapons utility riflemen here are just getting pinned kind of needlessly. And even the HMG team is going to have to back off. They're taking some uh, taking some serious hits here from this uh, normal looking machine gun team backed by a sniper. Beautiful combination, even if they're not both your own units. Uh, and now we see that, let me pause, and I'm going to switch on over to, uh, let's see, Smee Air's point of view. And... Uh, let the map just kind of flip around and, and let's take a look at where these guys are at tactically. So these allies have done really well up here in the north, um, capping some of this stuff, but not quite maintaining control of the important building in this area. Uh, and then the allies here in the far south, which is second Hellhound, capped this whole area and was really just kind of unopposed. And now it looks like he's flooding in and we've got kind of a pincer kind of attack going on here where uh, basically they're kind of like caving to the middle and attacking from both sides here. Kind of a typical phalanx kind of attack going on. So we'll see how well that works out. But that's kind of the gist of what's going on here. Uh, you'll notice big bulk of forces now in the front. Uh, RWZB is uh, building his barracks. Even a little bit of an annoying uh, machine gun emplacement here. I kind of like that. Uh, this machine gun emplacement is good for a couple of reasons. One, uh, you know, it just restricts access to this area, but also it restricts infantry movement across uh, this pathway. Uh, anybody running across here will get, uh, you know, suppressed and that sort of thing. So I like that second Hellhound has split up his infantry and is just kind of being annoying and capping this stuff behind this bunker here. Uh, being backed up by some flame engineers, that's looking pretty good. And only a single uh, set of um, pioneers hanging out in this building here. Meanwhile, just kind of back capping, just kind of being annoying. And oh no, it looks like a HMG team set up right behind him. You'll notice uh, a little bit of extra weapons damage and all that. Uh, like I may have said before, all of these players were kind of in the 20, 30, 40 range, so this is pretty much an average game, but I just kind of liked all the dynamics going on here. Katzenmeyer's Volksreindeers opening fire at this assault jeep, having to back away. Oh, taking a Panzer Shrek to the rear, uh, just able to get on out of there. Uh, these guys uh, trying to cap, but being driven off by the venerable Volksreindeers. Uh, totally just having to retreat here. So Katzenmeyer's venerable, uh, putting some pressure on this area. Looks like maybe tried to burn out this bunker a little bit or do some damage to this ops post. Uh, but pretty much that whole attack is gone. And now uh, second Helhan has to be careful because uh, he's totally exposed to being pushed himself now uh, that he just has a single bunker on this side. So let's take a look and see what's up. Uh, that kind of ruined jeep is just retreating. We've got some uh, overhead planes flying around, that sort of thing. Sniper heading up no man's land. Uh, meanwhile, let's take a look and see how this stuff is going here. So. Uh, HMG team uh, backed with a mortar team uh, are both uh, putting some pressure on this building here and it looks like there's a single machine gunner left in here. This building has a million hit points though. It's a total brick house. Uh, and uh, it looks like all the pioneers here. Oh, here we go. Front attack by the close combat Volksrangers coming in here. Now, pause for a sec. Now, notice, so he saw the position of the machine gun. The machine gun was originally firing forward, attacking this OBS post. Now that he sees the machine gun pointing out the front of the building now, he's rotating around to the back. The machine gun once again has to reposition. And you can see the machine gun sets up facing out the other window. He gets to one side. Machine gun pops magically to the right hand side he swaps back around again but unfortunately the one thing he couldn't have possibly counted on was that this is, is a forward barracks and a whole squad of riflemen pops up out of nowhere uh, so now all of a sudden there's no good place to run he's completely surrounded by riflemen and uh, the uh, Browning finally gets set up facing in the right direction oh he loses everybody so uh, 
it was a good attempt at micro, and unfortunately, just he just couldn't have counted on all those riflemen popping up out of nowhere. And now, once again, the machine gun resumes firing, and the mortar resumes firing. And so this area is very likely going to collapse, and it looks like Atazizi, I just want to call him Zizi, because that's kind of cool. But uh, Zizi is taking control of that area. So, uh, meanwhile here, we have the Greyhound armored car uh, finally kind of spearheading this attack. That was kind of the one thing that uh, the allies needed in this area. Smi Air's Greyhound is uh, now heading on in, putting some pressure on this bunker. Oh no! Landmines! No! Hit mine! He's down to about 25% hit points. Uh, he is putting a uh, little bit of fire on this building here, trying to you know deal with that HMG team. Uh, having the armored skirts is going to help him with that extra damage. Uh, but for the time being, it's helping him get in here. But note that since there are no like bits of camouflage on the front of that and the, the lid isn't open, that does not have a machine gun in it. Uh, so he's just kind of firing away at that here. But it was enough to kind of break through this frontal attack, uh, this kind of frontal you know, machine gun and sniper duo. And uh, now we have the mortar teams all setting up around here. Whoa, incoming mortar fire as well. Let's take a look and see what we got. Uh, a couple of machine gun teams. Uh, a couple of mortar teams, motorcycle, that sort of thing. And then this Ford Barracks is just getting wrecked. Look at that Ford Barracks. All the damage is taken. Completely missing the roof. Yeah, I'm just going to flop around here and look at that. Anyhow, so uh, we've got uh, Volksradiers popping out of there. Here comes a nice-looking attack here on the left-hand side. Having to retreat, though. Oh, you know what? It looked like he was kind of sitting, standing out here in the street, kind of firing against uh, uh, HMG team. That was not good. Not good positioning at all. Attacking from all sides, just kind of... Massive fighting, uh, retreating though right away. I think he kind of retreated a little early over there. And uh, just getting gunned down. Oh, the combination of mortar and uh, heavy machine gun fire, really lethal. But we do have an artillery strike coming in here. Boom, taking a chunk out of the roof. Taking a chunk out of the roof. Taking a Oh, and that kills everything. That definitely takes out the machine gun team and the mortar team. So... Hey man, not bad. The last little bit it took care of it. And you know what that was? Uh, obviously, these are two <laughs> airborne players. Uh, that was definitely the reconnaissance.